in sample case two, this time we're coming across a 65 year old man. He's got prostatic cancer. He's got bony metastases throughout his neuraxis. axis. Um, he's got a, the reason we're seeing him is because he's got an acute bowel obstruction that the surgeons want to operate on. Um, and he's been wound up to quite a hefty dose of um, me uh, methadone. You'll see that 150 milligrams of methadone per day. Um, and he's also on an anti-neuropathic agent. So if we're going to manage this patient perioperatively, yeah, we have to go through the process of an opioid conversion. Yes, we're going to look at things like um, epidurals or intrathecal management for this patient. Um, often I'll utilize um, morphine or hydromorphone down the um, epidural intrathecal catheter after working out a dose conversion. We may, in addition to that, have to use a subcutaneous driver because uh, realistically we just can't provide the analgesic support required intrathecally or epidurally in the post-operative phase. Uh, and often if the pain is very widespread because the bony mets are beyond the area that you're going to get adequate coverage, especially if we're looking at an epidural for management, then you just may not get the analgesia required. And we'll use our adjuvants in addition to that, the one, especially the ones that have been shown to be useful in bony pain. Um, and there are some specific um, uh, agents that can be utilised in bone pain, not necessarily so much in the acute phase, but certainly in the chronic phase. One example of that is radiotherapy, and beam radiotherapy is exceptionally good for controlling isolated bony pain and you can get complete pain relief in approximately 25% at one month in a meta-analysis looking at single locus bony pain from metastases with beam radiotherapy. All right. The mechanisms are thought to be yes a reduction in tumour load but also an anti-inflammatory effect of the radiotherapy. So radiotherapy in cancer pain management is our enemy and our friend depending on the context. So the general approach and the traditional approach to pain management uh, in the cancer model is the WHO step ladder. Uh, the step ladder has some um, excellent uh, aspects to it. It's very simple, it's very easy to follow. All of the medications are readily available worldwide. Remember this is the World Health Organization step ladder for cancer pain management. It works for 90% of cancer pain worldwide and it has excellent applicability. There are some drawbacks. It's very opioid focused, so you very quickly move on to opioid management. That's not necessarily inappropriate, but it certainly ignores a large uh, uh, proportion of potential agents that can be utilised for pain management. It doesn't discriminate between nociceptive, visceral and neuropathic pain, and therefore it omits um, a proportion, um, or, or sorry, it's inclusive of a proportion, proportion of patients who may not do so well with, with um, opioid uh, pharmacological um, management alone. It ignores the non-pharmacological interventions and I'm not just talking about the neurosurgical interventions and, and the blocks and so forth but also the supportive care interventions so that's things like uh, distraction therapy, music therapy, art therapy and so forth which actually can have a significant impact in cancer pain management. And it doesn't account for um, pain and cancer survivorship so really this is look a model looking at progressive cancer and it ignores the fact that a significant proportion of people who have pain related to cancer are now cured of their cancer. So we have adaptations of this model and sometimes they will include uh, interventional approaches to pain management, sometimes they will include uh, neuropathic, uh, neuropathic medications and the like. Um, we've got a wide range of opioids available to us. This is a chart to try and help um, some of the poor nursing staff at Peter Mac get around exactly what patients may or may not be on. Uh, often we'll see patients, they'll be on combinations of multiple opioids um, and we try as much as we can to simplify things. We do a lot of opioid rotation, um, principally in the chronic pain setting. We do a lot of rotation to medications like hydromorphone and methadone. Uh, the concept here is that there's just a lot of opioids out there that we have to be, be mindful of. There are issues with opioids. Um, we've heard a little bit about these in earlier talks. Um, obviously tolerance um, is a major issue in cancer pain. Dependence an issue. Addiction not so much, but you certainly can see addiction in uh, cancer pain patients. Probably of more relevance are some of the effects on the hypothalamic pituitary system. Uh, we see edema, we see lowered testosterone, bone demineralization in the long term. If we're talking about short term, you know, people who've got weeks to months to live, perhaps not so much of an issue, but many of these patients now are surviving five years, 10 years, 15 years before they get their cancer recurrences. These issues are becoming more relevant. Um, opportunistic infection because of the immunosuppression and this concept of neoplasia, uh, either redevelopment or de novo, which at this stage is theoretical. There is no definitive evidence to say that if we utilise 
opioids for our cancer pain patients, that they will get progression of the cancer or they will get cancer recurrence. However, there is emerging evidence to say if we can de-escalate opioids in the long term and we can institute other therapies, that we will see longer survival times and the two may be interrelated. Uh, and opioid-induced hyperalgesia, which is, I think, something that, um, that we ignore a lot in the cancer pain model, or at least uh, ascribe uh, erroneously to um, tolerance alone. Neuropathic pain also deserves a special mention. I'm sorry that that um, slide may not be projecting particularly well. Um, it's, it's taken from uh, one of the Heinrich Kellogg um, uh, papers. Um, uh, defined now as pain arising as a direct consequence of lesion or, or disease affecting the somatos somatosensory system, we've become a little bit more definitive in our um, uh, diagnostic uh, rationale for neuropathic pain. However, often in the cancer model, if we've got a pain and it's not responding how we want it to to opioids, we'll throw in agents that uh, are effective for neuropathic pain control. Um, obviously, uh, post-surgical pains are quite a common cause of neuropathic pains in the cancer model. The care pathway for neuropathic pain is different, so it tends to be less responsive to the analgesics and the opioids, as we know, and more responsive to medications that target membrane stabilisation, such as the tricyclics, the gabapentinoids, and perhaps some of the other membrane stabilising medications. 